very good, surprisingly. And some of them are very, very bad, unsurprisingly. Um, and uh, I pulled a bunch of them and we'll go until we run out of time or until we run out of games, whichever happens. And then it'll be done and you'll all go home and you'll remember bits and pieces of the panel and it'll be hard to explain because like all improv, short form or long form, you have to be there and it doesn't work ever again. So if I create a new inside joke for you and your friend, I'm sorry for your other friends. Um, I'm gonna do an example of a uh, fake post-mortem. This is the only time where we need to have audience participation. Other than that, you laugh and you uh, clap and you enjoy, but you don't yell things, because you're funny. I know you are, but I don't know you. I didn't ask you to do this. <laughs> so like, leave it for comments that I won't read. And we'll just like call it there. And every once in a while, someone's gonna say something really funny and break that rule. But like, come on, don't be that person. Anyway, um, Bulma, can I have the name of a fake video game? Yeah, yeah, I mean, all right. Somebody ate my cheeseburger. Oh yeah, okay, so uh, I'm gonna put this down and talk over, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk into this microphone at the podium. So yeah, I um, fully funded and produced a uh, visual novel called Someone Ate My Cheeseburger. Um, I supplied all the art myself. I am not an artist or a game designer, but I had a vision and that vision was that someone ate my cheeseburger and I thought that if I made the game based on my real life experiences that I would Sherlock Holmes solve my own mystery and figure it out because I knew it was someone in the office. I knew it. I brought that cheeseburger in and we don't have guests. We don't have random people pop in. There are no cheeseburger thieves except for my co-workers, so it had to be one of them. So without their permission, I took photos of all my co-workers, <laughs> and then I used Illustration and Photoshop and GIMP to make cartoon versions of them, uh, and then put them in a game, and then played out scenarios that would lead me to figure out who did it. Now, as we all know, I never solved that question of who ate my cheeseburger, but I did make a lot of money and a pretty good game. I think we can all agree. Um, so yeah, I mean, the, the moral of the story is that you take your real life experiences, you put it in your art, and then maybe you turn a profit. But also, I'm still gonna figure it out someday. I'm gonna find you. You stole my cheeseburger, and I will not forgive you. Anyway, uh, that is an example. That's just... Uh, that's just an example off the top of a dome of what a postmortem might be like. Yeah, in that case, that game was awesome. In many cases, they will hate the game they made. Who knows? Uh, let's start by bringing up Chris Straub, Kate Welch, and joining them, Danielle Riendo. You can just uh, take the podium there. Uh, and the game that you'll be chatting about is Heartbreak, Legend of the Cutie. This was my dream game. And it was such an honor to bring Chris Straub and D Danielle Randu into this because as you all know, they are the most cutie. Thank you. No cuties were harmed in the making of this game, <laughs> unless they wanted to be. <laughs> and, and while I enjoyed being a part of this game, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll just say it now, as I've said to you many times, I was concerned that we didn't approach cutie legendary status as you seem to apply to us. Well, I, I mean... We are cute. Sure. But legendarily... I, I think now that we, we're, we're exposing this postmortem to an audience, can I get a round of applause for just how much of a cutie these two are, please? <laughs> And the fact that you guys don't think you're cute, that's the heartbreak. My heart breaks every day for everyone out there who doesn't know how cute they are. It's really my mission in life to make you all feel cute. Anyway, it's on Xbox and... Um... Nintendo Switch, that was announced last week. Yeah, but Nindies. It's, yeah. But it's not gonna happen. <laughs> That is the heartbreak. 
Bye. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Um, yeah. Sometimes they just call it themselves. Okay, cool. Um, you don't often hear an announcement of a new platform and then the reveal that you're not going to bring it to that platform at the same time. I wish more game companies were that honest. Like, hey, we know you won't shut up unless we say it's coming to the Switch, but come on. Um, all right. Let's bring up our next uh, presenters for their postmortem. Abby Russell and Ben Pack, please. Um, so Abby and Ben, um, first off, I'm sorry. It's okay. For what? <laughs> yeah. Right? Um, secondly, I'd love to hear a little bit about your game, Don't. <laughs> Um, first of all, thank you so much for making it platinum. No, that's when we put it out. Make, yeah. Okay. I thought it was like a record deal. Anyway, <laughs> thanks for buying our game. We really love it so, so much. Um, it is an origami simulator. Um, and I know what you're thinking. You're like, okay, you start to fold the... Don't. Don't start to fold the paper until you read the rules. Exactly. But you don't want to read the rules until you get the game. And right. it's just, it works all the way down. It, you kind of, you, mm -hmm. it's hard to know where to start with a game like this. Right. Um, but where we started was with our own origami collection. So Ben and I have a little origami house and little origami children that we have raised <laughs> all on our own. And we are so proud of them. Most of them. Well, yes, <laughs> most of them. Um, but this game, you know, it really is about hesitation and meditation and origami. Yeah, that's right. You know, origami, you just you look at it and it's oh, it's paper. No, it's not paper. It's it's you start inward and you have to use your hands and your brain. Mhm. Mm it's part of your soul. Mhm. Mm uh, ben, why don't you share your favorite origami creature that you've made? Oh, my um favorite one is oh, uh, it's kind of like you t it's a it's a sp sea sponge. Mm -hmm. You start with a square and you cut off like a third of it and it's a rectangle. Uh-huh. <laughs> Um, How about you? I just like a good dog origami. Just a classic dog. Yeah. There's no cutting involved for the dog one. <laughs> yeah, most origami turns out you don't cut, but uh -huh. I learned I'm not great at origami. I know. That was the one thing that I was like, don't cut. And you're like, do cut? <laughs> do cut. And you're like, the game's not called do. And that's the last time we talked before now. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we're making that part DLC, so I think it kind of works hand in hand. Yeah, I'm looking mm -hmm. forward to um, Don't 2. This time you might be able to. Uh -huh. <laughs> we, uh, stay tuned, we have some good announcements for that coming out. Yes. All right, thank you so much. Um, obviously, there were a lot of jokes in that one. It was very fun, but I'm kind of got stuck in my head thinking about what their origami kids look like. Paper. They're, they're, they're made out of paper. You're right, Ben. They're made out of paper. They're cute. That's all I thought. Anyway, uh, why don't we bring up Dave Lang. Uh, Dave, thank you so much for uh, making time for us to talk about your game, Gun Date, a Battle Royale visual novel. <laughs> All right, so this was a tough one. Um, I'm a father of three. I love my children very, very much. They're all playing Fortnite. That's all they play. That's all they want to play is Fortnite this, Fortnite that. And they're so brilliant, and they're so special, and they're so loving. I decided to them, let them pick the next game we do. And I'm like, we're professionals. We can figure anything out. Give it enough time, enough money. We can make anything a good idea. We can make it manifest into a video game. Turns out that's fucked up and wrong. <laughs> um, my oldest loves reading. My middle one loves Battle Royale. And for some reason, the young one loves gun dates. <laughs> Don't even get me fucking started on that. But anyway, the, should have seen the, the first prototype for this was pretty bleak. Um, the way it started was, you know how it's like most of these things, you're in a bus in the sky or a plane, and then you drop on an island, and oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This one was speed dating. So speed dating, gun on every table, you sit down, it's the first person to blow the other person away, then you go to the next table, and there's one person standing, and they're so lonely! They're just there to date, 
And then uh, the old one's like, where's my fucking book, Dad? Where's the book part? You promised me a book in this game. So we had to start over, scrap that and start over. <laughs> this time we started with a book. And I, I used to really, I don't know about y'all, do you guys ever have Choose Your Own Adventure still? Is that a thing? Yeah. So I fucking love those. Um, so we tried to make that into like a video game. It turns out that's just a video game. Like that's, <laughs> that's not special at all. It's already been done a hundred times. And these three ideas, you know, they seemed incongruous for a while. They seemed like they wouldn't fit together to make something cohesive. Still do. Um, <laughs> it's been in development for six years. Uh, so far we've burned through $120 million. <laughs> Our investors are still optimistic. Thank you, Tencent, shout outs. <laughs> um, what, is this thing's gonna come out on every platform under the sun? And that's how we're gonna make our money back uh, eventually when this thing ships. I mean, sorry, 2019, that's what I told the board. 2019, <laughs> gun date, battle royale, visual novel. You also might be asking why we have a postmortem for a game that's not out yet. <laughs> that's something I just thought of that seems weird. <laughs> a joke to, here's the thing, it's now in early access. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dave. Uh, thank you, Dave. Uh, you know, you never know which kid is going to be into gun date. It, it's never the one you think. You're like, really? Okay. Uh, please welcome, uh, not Danielle Rando, uh, cause you joined up with the other team. Danielle, the game th that I was going to want you to talk about, just you, I'll reveal it now cause it's gone forever, was called Running Simulator 2019. <laughs> No, I don't want, no, Danielle, I 100%, well, I mean, all right, fine. I got, please talk about Running Simulator 2019. We'll make this short. All right, we'll make it short. I made this game. It's Running Simulator 2019. I want everybody to know what it feels like not to be a runner, but to be a running simulator. So it's a simulator simulator. There's many levels going on there. So what you got to do is you get that, that Wii U. No, it's just the Wii, the pad, and you're kind of, kind of running there. But that's only to get the game running. So I sold three copies. I uh, was really proud. I really only thought I'd sell two. Uh, to my mom and my dad, actually, but my sister also bought one, so that was, that was pretty cool. A lot of things went right in making this game, uh, and a lot of things went wrong in making this game. Most of it had to do with the simulator of the simulator of running, which is an activity that not many people like to watch, so, you know... Don't worry about it because we're going to do fishing, fishing, fishing simulator. It's three simulators on top of each other. You are both making the simulation and playing the simulation at, at once. Don't worry. We'll be at the postmortem next year for that one. Great. Thank you so much, Danielle Riendo. Both being bullied into and bullying her way into doing that. I don't know how that happened, but it did. Uh, let's chat with Adi and Liz. Why don't you come up here? Um, hello. Hello. Hi. I'm so honored that you're here, and I can't wait to hear about your game. Oops, we made a popular game. <laughs> well, I think we can all, I just want to start, I think we can all identify with the feeling when you do something and you just go, Oops, I shouldn't have done that. And then after you have that thing where people start buying it and you're like, no, no, this was an accident, don't. We actually tried recalling the game. We tried, uh, we asked people very nicely, like, hey, maybe just like give it back to us. And they were like, we can't give you a video game back to you. Um, and also this is so popular. And um. <laughs> I want to be popular like you. And I mean, content-wise, as I'm sure most of you know, because it's really popular, um, it is a, a, a high school simulator about one of those people who was like really popular in high school. And we like kind of made it as like a joke to address how, um, how popular we were in high school. So very popular. Like very. <laughs> Fun fact, uh, so Dean and I actually go way back, and in high school, we would also wear matching shirts. <laughs> <laughs> very, 
That's what did it. That's what did it. That's what did it. And so that's... I'm like kids out there. If you're being bullied or if you're having a rough time in school, just get a friend. Buy matching T-shirts. It'll it'll all it'll it'll change. There it'll is, change your life. There is no way that this advice will backfire. Absolutely. <laughs> but we're we're getting off track. We're yes, getting off track. That's true. Um, so yeah, the incredibly popular "Oops, We Made a Popular Game" is available on um, the Etch a Sketch platform, um, which is really skyrocketing, um, as as we've made very clear. Uh, and we're actually we're very excited to announce uh, the sequel to the game "Oops Two Oopsie Doodles," um, and we highly advise that you don't buy that one either. Yeah, mm -hmm. please don't. Um, don't we'll give, refund you don't, and everything. <laughs> don't give us your money. Um, yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, we assembled uh, a panel of experts in their field, uh, great game designers, and now we are blessed to have, uh, who has made an appearance at every single show, uh, Mr. Jeff Gersman. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, Jeff, we would love to hear your thoughts uh, after the fact on the, the game that you designed. Yeah. Ron. Oh, yeah. Ron. Yeah. No, it's, Ron. Uh, you know, uh, so the original nugget for Ron is we really just thought it would be good to honor the rich legacy and history of the world's greatest American, Ron Jeremy. Uh, you know, he's uh, our greatest living actor. Um, he is a treasure, uh, a monument to America. Everything we love about this great nation can be summed up in Ron Jeremy. Um, we quickly got sidetracked uh, in, in, on this one, and I think the... It ended up working out, I think, a little bit better for us in terms of finding more of an audience for the game. Originally, it was intended to be uh, primarily in VR and a little more adult in nature. Um, we outsourced a lot of the development uh, to a Korean team, and we didn't have money left over for any kind of like translator to tell them uh, what the thing was. So in their cursory searches for, for Ron, uh, they, of course, discovered that his nickname is the Hedgehog. And very quickly, things went, I guess it was a happy accident. You know, it was a happy series of accidents, I guess I would say. You know, we ended up uh, appealing to a totally different demographic, uh, one that was being underserved, um, we feel. And I, I think it, it worked out for the best. I wasn't really expecting a, a side-scroller uh, when, it, when it came to this, uh, with, of course, the the very erotic mini-games uh, that we got. Um, but I think the side-scrolling worked better than most. Uh, and, you know, he can roll into a ball and do the things that other video game hedgehogs can do. And, you know, like, they weren't making a ton of those games when we announced this. And uh, so when, when the other video game hedgehog, I'm not going to say his name, uh, came back on the scene, I think we were initially worried that that might undercut us a little bit. Um, but it really turned out that, you know, uh, people love Ron Jeremy uh, and they want to see him do his business uh, and so that's why uh, we're proud to announce that we are going to patch in VR support uh, so that you can truly be Ron and uh, that's why we put the periods in it here because we, we just felt it felt more cyber that way I don't know it doesn't really stand for much of anything it was just like oh you know it's like I rolling over nuts you know I, I don't know like we're just like We've got a long list back at the studio uh, that we're going through. We figure we're just going to hit upon something one of these days that'll make it make sense. But until then, um, oh, also I should point out that Ron Jeremy has withdrawn from the project, so we kind of had to not use his full name there. But uh, we're pretty happy with it. We figure that the, the next couple of patches are going to get it in the hands of more people um, and, and you know maybe kind of adult it up a little bit. We figure now that we've sold a lot of copies to a lot of kids, we're just going to patch in the stuff we really wanted to see. <laughs> So, you know, stay tuned for that. You'll have to download a separate patch from our website for the, the good stuff. It can't, Steam, they won't let us, they won't let us put on Steam. It's just like, they'll put anything on Steam. I don't know. It's, uh, we have high hopes for it. 
Thank you. Um, and please, please buy Ron. Please. All right. Thank you very much, Jeff. Thank you so much for that, Jeff. Um, yeah, I'd always wonder what Ron stood for, and uh, I guess it doesn't. It's a, it's a truth, justice, and the American way. That's what Ron stands for. Uh, for those that might not have heard, truth, justice, and the American way. That's what Ron stands for, and that's, that's something we can all take home. Lightning rounds. Okay. Uh, yeah, please woo. I don't know. You don't have to. Uh, so the lightning round works, as I, as I mentioned at the top of the show. Uh, these were all pulled uh, from Twitter retweets uh, of give me a fake video game name and also help me promote this show. Uh, so thanks to everybody who did. If yours wasn't included, I didn't like it. Um, and I'm just going to pull people up at random. I'm going to do it too because it's fun. Hey, Ben, why don't you come up? We'll talk about our video game. Uh, let's talk about Tom Clancy's Long Division. I mean, most people know uh, Tom Clancy as a war guy, but, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, general Vague, black me, ops, yeah, sort yeah, of. Yeah. But he has some other talents that the yeah. uh, people weren't aware of. No. I mean, people are like, oh, what am I going to use Long Division for? But we showed you what you're going to use Long Division for. That's right. It's like this one, you know, it's the, you, you can just picture it. There's a kid in class. It's like, I'm never going to use this in real life. Cut to, you know, terrorists smashing through the window. What are you going to do then? Tom Clancy is going to do some Long Division. He's going to do some Long Division. Figure out the figure best route out. of how to get inside the building. It's a lot of, like, projections, and, yeah, yeah. Yeah. blueprints. Prince, it's, yeah. it's a very boring game. Um, I mean, it's... <laughs> Do not get us wrong. It is an educational game oh, yeah. and not great, <laughs> but it's important. Yeah, it's very important. We feel we felt good about making it. Yeah, and we feel even better about the Common Core patches that are coming uh, later this year. <laughs> yep, that yep, yep, are, yep. definitely aren't m mandated by the state at all. No, 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 no. We no, want no, no. it to be this yeah, way. Yeah, we 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 took several, several, several meetings <laughs> with a curriculum that we have no say in and adjusted the game to our own vision. Yeah. Ben, thanks so much. Thanks. Uh, all right. Um, uh, Danielle and Abby, why don't you come up? We're going to have you uh, chat about your game, uh, which is <laughs> Battle Uncle. Yes. This one was tough. I had to get my uncle in. Mm -hmm. He wasn't happy about it. Yes. I refused to volunteer any of my uncles, so I was fine with that, though. though. So. I, I, I noticed. Yes. I, I had to do all the emotional labor on this mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. uh, with the and uncle. that's why this game didn't do so well, I say. <laughs> do, you, do you think that was why? Do you think maybe, maybe. Uh, the fact that uh, we couldn't really get along or, uh, you know, uh, agree on anything or get. You're talking about your me uncles? or your uncle? <laughs> It's getting a little, it's a little personal now. I don't okay. know uh, if you had to bring my uncle into this. Uh, you're saying I like Uncle Kurt. I think he's a fun man who loves his knives. Yeah. <laughs> he sure does. He keeps them very shiny. And mm -hmm. I thought you knew that was going to be an issue if you kind of used it for your peanut butter and jelly sandwich to cut the crust off. Okay. I don't like the crusts. And I think that I have a right to have some boundaries and some standards and Kurt should get in line. Okay, but, you know, you didn't have to send him to the ER for that. Okay. Okay. Well, that wasn't necessary. No. Do, do y'all want to hmm? talk about this off? Are y'all good? We're talking about the game, Pat. Okay, yeah, sorry. That's my fault. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I am sorry to interrupt. Um, my favorite part of the game um, was when Uncle Kurt shared all of your family secrets. <laughs> all right, great. Thanks so much. <laughs> Um, let's have uh, Chris and Liz. Why don't you come up? Uh, yeah, give up for them. Uh, and we're going to hear about your game, Madden versus Capcom. So, it was a really tough game to get through legal. Yeah. Uh, and in the, the way that it did not. Mm -hmm. um, and these are two topics that I'm well versed on. Um, I, I could tell you anything you want to know about sports and technology. 
Um, but I'm taking up too much. Oh, you, you, you speak. You speak. Well, I, th I think the unique twist was that I, I, I like that we enjoy, you know, we enjoy what comes out of Mad and we enjoy what comes out of, of Capcom. Yeah. But what about the people themselves? Yeah. How would Madden fight against the man what Capcom? What methods would they use? Yes. Uh, and I'm so glad we got to explore that. Yeah, um, I think it was a unique. What was your favorite method of battle or of, uh, of yeah, of battling that we came up with? I think just a lot of exploration of ideas, yeah. and, and given that it is a visual novel, that there's a lot of... <laughs> All right, great. Thank you very much. All right. Um, all right. Uh, Kate and Dave, uh, why don't you all come up here, and let's hear about your game. Yes, hello. Hello. Uh, let's hear about Invisible Garbage. So, one thing that's difficult is to make a game about invisible stuff. <laughs> Typically speaking, in a visual medium, you generally need to see what you're interacting with. Visual feedback's a big thing. Fuck, like normally when you just hit a button in the menu, a particle goes off or something. Right. The whole game. Right. Is not, there's nothing in the game. <laughs> um, and a lot of reviewers, I notice, were pretty. They thought they were real clever. They're like, yeah. oh, this invisible garbage, I see. This, is vis this game is visible garbage to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> funny. You fuckers. Fuck you, Kotaku. <laughs> Uh, but despite all that, it's a huge success with the hardcore PC gaming community. Of because, course, Because yes. they're like, oh, my video card, it's, oh, it's overdraw, all this translucency, yep. all these megapixels, yep. man. There are, there are some people who have claimed to see the garbage. Yeah. <laughs> you tweak the settings just enough, you mess with the alpha here, yep. you go yep. in, you set this near firmware. Yeah, they think it's an Easter egg, but there's no garbage yes, there. Yes, there's, there's no garbage. There's no garbage. There's it's none. Invisible it's garbage. not invisible, there's just none. <laughs> all right, thank you very much. D and Jeff, why don't you come up here? Let's do it. Yeah. And let's hear about your game, Insurance Scam Simulator 2003. Uh, so we uh, had a lot of uh, expertise in this field coming in. Uh, we've been scamming our way into insurance millions for a good long time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we came up with the idea for... Um, the, the, the various uh, mascots of the Geico company, the, the Geico lizard mm -hmm. and the stack of bills with the eyeballs on it for some reason. And all of those are to confuse the cut. Or I guess I shouldn't say all of our secrets. Well, but. yeah. I mean, you know, we want to save uh, some things for the fans, of course. You know, we don't want to necessarily, like, reveal every, every single thing. But, uh, yeah, we did find that uh, being able to simulate a proper insurance scam... Uh, has actually rendered a lot of our techniques obsolete. Um, you know, we we originally came up with this game in 2003, and here in 2018, uh, it's been a hard time when it comes to, you know, I can't, like, walk in front of a car and fall down and go, ah, my ankle. Like, they know that mm -hmm. now. Yeah. Um, so, really, we're here to say that um, we are proficient in the Microsoft Office suite. Yes. Uh, I, I know Outlook. I am... A Photoshop ninja. Oh, yeah. And, He's uh, a pro. Yeah, and I, I got a lot of Google Foo. I'm, I'm something of a, a web guru. Uh, so yeah. please uh, check out my LinkedIn. Um, We're also not um, above uh, social media management, if no. that is something you need to uh, produce Absolutely. some GIFs and uh, clickable, engageable content. Animated, like a, uh, if you need like a guy that blinks, like I got it. <laughs> Like All right, thank you very much for talking about that nonsense game. Uh, let's have Danielle and Ben come up, and uh, we'll have you talk about your next game, the game you just finished pretty recently. Uh, let's hear about Mario Iliad. Really, this was an odyssey to make. Oh, God, I mean... I mean, I don't know the order. I didn't mean for this to happen. <laughs> yeah, uh, so first and foremost, I want to get this out of the way. Never read the Iliad. Doesn't matter. I'm rich now. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Tompkins, ninth grade history, like, fuck you. I'm here. You're not. 
Uh, second of all, I guess, uh, you know, it's not about the journey, it's about the destination. And for Mario, uh, I feel like the getting back and seeing that uh, Princess Peach had married Mario's son, what was it? You were telling me about yeah. the plot of the Iliad earlier. There really earlier. was a lot going on. There was a bow. There oh, was a whole, yeah. Remember the bow. Don't forget the bow. It's very important that there was a bow there. Mm -hmm. uh, you're talking about the destination being more important. And of course, Mario being on a cruise, uh, which was a big part of this. Uh, Mario, if, if you didn't know, Mario's big on cruises. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, a lot of people lauded us and said... Oh, no. I press... Uh, don't worry about that. Uh, <laughs> a lot of people said uh, the idea of a Mario game that's exclusively water levels would never sell, but again... They were wrong. We're here, they're not. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. <laughs> Nothing about this panel was designed well for Ben from having to constantly move your legs every time I call up someone who's not you, to that, this whole thing. Look, I don't remember the order. It's gonna come up again. A pun is gonna happen when Danielle's here. We're all just gonna have to endure it and enjoy it. Um, Abby and Chris, why don't you come up here and we'll hear about your, uh, we'll hear about your incredible game, Grumbly's Tumbly Story. Mm -hmm. This is a story that needed to be told. Oh, yeah. So, when we're hungry and we're thinking about stuff, I know that we like to call our, our tummies our, our grumbly tumblies. Right. And grumbly has sort of become this avatar for the, mm -hmm. you know, the emotions associated with, with mild hunger mm -hmm. uh, and, in, yeah. and an increased interest in, in snacks. Yeah. It's really an allegory for getting lunch. Right. But we feel like that's sort of missing from the curriculum today, yeah. and that's why we offered this game to schools for free. Mm -hmm. and I think that that's a big deal. I know, and it's a shame that they aren't putting it in the schools because it's too violent and incredibly confusing. I don't understand. But I, you know, we maintain that hunger can be a, a very a violent and a sexual thing. You're time. telling me, my friend. <laughs> So, you know, and I just want to say for my own self, thank you to Grumbly mm -hmm. for teaching me those lessons. Yeah. And also for, you know, not being allowed to enter a school ever again. But that's not a big yeah. deal to me. No, I mean, you know, art is sacrifice. Yeah. To you, Grumbly. To you, Grumbly. Let's All pour right. one out thank for you Grumbly. So much. Yeah. Thank you. Um,. Uh, Dee and Liz, why don't you come join me? We'll talk about the game the three of us made together. Oh, yes. um, I'm very excited uh, to chat with y'all about our game, Dota 3. <laughs> um, so as women, we thought it was important to breathe new life into the Dota franchise um, by bringing in a team of people who have never once in their life played Dota. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It was... Uh, a truly a revolutionary move, if I may be so bold. Uh, and then somebody with money was like, a guy has to be on this team. Uh, and so they brought me in, a person that does not enjoy the game at all. And honestly, we tried to say, like, anyone but Pat. Just give us anyone. And then they gave us Pat, so we yeah. had to deal with it. Because if but. you had to have someone, you were like, what if he knew... It liked it and like new things and like spoke to the community. Yeah, what if you like, like brought something new and exciting to the team and they were like, yeah. how about Pat? And we were yeah. like, <laughs> I was just happy to be there. Really, I was honestly just like psyched to be in the room. It's a lot of no, cool people. No, you can tell you, you sang all day. Oh, hell yeah. All day. Yeah. It didn't stop. You know, no, 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 no. I wish the song was in the game, but you know, you can't get everything you want. It's in the DVD bonus footage. Yeah. Uh -huh. Which uh, we're selling on Amazon. Uh, if you'd like to hear uh, Pat's dulcet tones. Um, yeah, there are not enough making of DVDs about video games that are sold think, separately. Again, <laughs> again, revolutionary. Um, no one had ever done it, and I, I, I'm happy to have done it with you guys. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. Right. Thanks for talking about our successful video game. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Yeah. 
All right. Uh, Jeff and Dave, why don't you come up here? And we'll hear about your video game. Honestly, this just mines cryptocurrency. Remember that sweet 18 months when we were getting fucking paid? Blockchain! Yeah! Let's go! That's right! Yeah. Um, then the bottom dropped out. And it, was kinda, uh, yeah. it was a good run. It was a great run. I mean, do you feel bad at all about like destroying the environments? In what? Way, are, what? No, like what? all the, the carbon emissions because the extra energy were making people burn unwittingly? What is that? No, that's, they were going to drive cars. You know, if they weren't playing our game, what are they going to be doing? They're going to be driving to a well, car. No, this They're going to be eating beef, which puts a lot of carbon in the atmosphere. But then we shouldn't have put the mode in the game where we don't have to be there to play it. We encourage them not to even be there to play yeah, it. Yeah, and I was like, here's an idle game. It's a hot yeah, clicker. Well, just leave it just running. Just leave it running just overnight. Be rack up the high Yeah, scores. come on, man. Don't you want to be number one on the leaderboard? Yeah. So That's right. Meanwhile, I got this fucking McLaren. <laughs> they didn't take that away when the fucking bottom dropped out. Didn't, they it, took it away. Yeah, they took it away. <laughs> Yeah. I tell people it just got stolen. I, I read something very interesting about cryptocurrency uh, very recently. It's that there's like a shadow market of people who like own like 33% of the market and they actually control the price and they kind of manipulate everything. It's not actually a real market. That would have been good to know. Yeah, that would have been uh, some research that would have been great to have ahead of time. I think uh, I also would not have bought all this NVIDIA stock had yeah. I known. Yeah, rough Q2. Rough Q2. Yeah. But, uh, you know, we're thinking maybe like Q3, Q4, we're going to do a little bit better because we're just going to patch a keylogger into the game and start selling passwords. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Okay. I think we all learned a little bit about cryptocurrency. Uh, Kate and Abby, why don't you pop up here and we'll hear about your game. Cybercat's Neon Subterfuge. My grandmother's dying wish <laughs> was that we make a sequel to her favorite game, Cybercats. Mm -hmm. And we were happy to fulfill your grand's wishes. Yep. You know? She left us $200 million yes. with the specific requirement that we make a Cybercats um, mm -hmm. uh, sequel. And honestly, Neon and Subterfuge, those two concepts are contradictory in a lot of ways. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's true. But she laid out a very specific uh, sort of blueprint of what she wanted the game to be. Like we say, she was a very big fan of the original Cybercats. Uh, you know, I just remember visiting her in the hospital and having her playing cyber games. I know. <laughs> she was covered head to toe in Cybercats tattoos. Yeah. <laughs> God, she was amazing. God. So strong. I just wish she could get a subterfuge tattoo. I know. Oh, I think she'd really so like cute. it. Should we exhume her? We should. <gasps> yes! We should. Oh, yeah, all right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Chris, why don't you come up? Uh, Chris, join me. We're, whoa, fuck. Okay, oh, fuck. Hey, we're all going to take a, a real-life pause. Um, uh, we're going to take a quick little pause here. Okay. Great. Um, so, so Kate is doing okay. All of the video did go out when that happened. So if somebody wants to go see what needs to get plugged back in, we could... I mean, I can see what they're called, so we can just fucking rock through this. Oh, the mic. The mics are dead, too. Oh, shit. Okay. So. Um. Look, did I plan this? No. Yeah, okay, we're back. We're back. Um, Kate, I'm so sorry that fucking happened. Holy shit. Fuck. 
I was like, if the chairs are towards the back, they won't feel weird about being at the podium and not or being at the table and not saying anything. I mean, we're going to fix that for the next show. We won't do that again. Fuck, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Shit. Uh, well, look, I've got more panels, so come to those. Uh, all right. Well... <laughs> Yeah, scoot up, and I mean these aren't gonna. I mean these mics aren't gonna work for a while, uh, which is fine, because uh, I'm just going to yeah. Um. Okay. Yeah. All right. Great. Um. So. By pushing the red button, Chris, why don't you speak into a microphone from where you're seated? Because uh, we're doing this now. And, uh, yeah, um, if you could yeah, turn some mics on, we'll get this going. Uh, Chris, I, I, I want to talk to you about our video game, uh, Beef Stack 2, Beef Em Stronger. Listen, we got a, lo we got a lot of... Uh Complaints with Beef Stack One, not yeah. Beef. I get it. All right. Why were they so mad about Beef Stack One? We heard you. Yeah. The beef wasn't strong enough. Yeah. And we finally solved the problem. Yeah. Yeah. I hope you're all happy. Reddit was very unhappy with Beef Stack One. They were like, "Why did you call it One? Are you going to make another one of these shitty games?" Yes, we, we were. were. Like, Fuck you. Yes, we are yes, going to make we another were. one. Thicker. And then they Denser ate their words because they really liked the second game a lot. Oh yeah, you stack them as high as you want this time. We, yeah, we increase the memory cap. Yeah, so we can render that beef uh, as many uh, slabs as you desire. Does it look as good as it did in our demo? No. Yeah, we had to make changes to the art in order to finish the game, assholes. Is the is the beef as wet as it was at E3? No. Yeah. No. 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 It's not as wet. It's not as red, but damn it, it's stacked way higher. And that's what you said you wanted. Now, if we made a game called Wet Beef, we fucked up. But we didn't yeah, make that game. It's dry as hell. It's and very thank dry. Thank God we didn't make that game. Chris, I think we made a winning game. Thank you so much. Love you. All right. Um, ben and Jeff, uh, let's talk about your game Battle Royale, Battle Royale, Battle Royale. <laughs> Oh, I pushed it. Oh, I pushed it off. See, I clicked it and turned it off. Mm. Yeah. Uh, That's really embarrassing. That that <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know what the fuck I was thinking. Uh, but it really gets back to, I think, a lot of our philosophy in designing this game is we wanted to try to do things differently. Yeah, you know, it's just like a cliche at this point. A hundred, like, what are the battle royale? A hundred people, sure. a bus, a bl an island, functional gameplay. We didn't want any of that. No. No. But we did want to uh, sell some units. So we went with two major strategies and one minor strategy. Strategy one, battle royale, right in the name. Yeah. It, kids love it. Kids yeah. can't get enough of it. You, you guys seen this? Baseball players do the dance sometimes. It's crazy. No, yeah, it's baseball everywhere. players. Like what? Are they, you know, it's yeah. not like they're playing fucking baseball. Those games no. are like nine fucking hours. Right. They have plenty of time to dance. Uh, strategy number two. It's on the switch. <laughs> Doesn't matter what it no. is. Like what it is. Like, I could I could pull out a switch right here, right now. Take a shit on the screen. It would sell seven hundred thousand copies. At this point, it's about the convenience. You know, you want to be able to battle royale anywhere if you're in a park. Uh, what are some other places? Like, I don't know. I don't. I don't really go like a, like, like a, a park, like an indoor park. Yeah, like an indoor, like a like, like a, a gym a gymnasium. Yeah, like a or like one of those climbing gyms. Yeah, you could play it there. You could play it there. You could pretty much play it wherever. Um, but the other thing, number three, is the the biggest selling point: uh, three hundred players. That's right, and we figured with 300 players, uh, the 
more people we have waiting to play our game in the queue time, the more screens we can show them of our exclusive battle pass items. Yeah. And you know, when you're waiting for 299 other players to load into the game, that's a lot of uh, a lot of cosmetics being pushed. Definitely. Maybe you want a skirt or a head that looks like a duck. These are all things you can have. Or a skirt for the duck. A duck skirts huge. Uh, and teachers hate this game. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Teachers hate the. Did you know Ron Jeremy was a school teacher before All he got right, into the Jeff, film business? Jeff, thank you so much, Jeff. As always, thank you so much, Jeff. Um, it's true. Dave and Abby, uh, can't wait to hear about uh, your game in Sylvania. <laughs> well, we took a lot from your life, right, Dave? Yeah. You know, this was a very personal story for me. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was something that I just, like, couldn't relate to on, like, a very base level, and I don't think I ever will, but I like supporting you through this journey. Yeah, it's, listen, when you're, when you're living with this every single day, uh, there's good days, mostly bad days, mostly a lot of bad days. Yep. I'm glad you were there to help me get through this and tell my story. Yeah, me too. Do you remember um, that first, the, the first prototype we did? Oh, Boy, do I. <laughs> it was weirdly bloody. Uh, a lot of blood. Yeah, you wouldn't expect mm -hmm. it for something called Insylvania. Um, what? what? Uh, you you want to stop that, talking about blood? No. Oh, okay. Well, I do. Thank you so much. Um, so, peek behind the curtain. This was the thing I thought was going to make the panel feel real weird. Uh, and it did, but not the weirdest thing that happened. So, uh, yeah. Uh, Kate, do you, uh, do you want to talk about a game that you and I made? Sure. Great. Let's do it. Yeah, let's talk about... Oh, uh, oh no, fuck. Uh, I'm good. sorry. Yeah, we got it. Let's talk about Oops All Berries. There aren't enough video games about cereal, honestly. There just aren't. Yeah, and this uh, wasn't actually licensed by General Mills or Kellogg or whatever the fuck it is. We still don't know who owns the... We don't know who makes Captain Crunch. We just know that the name Oops All Berries is so good, yeah. there should be a video game called Oops All Berries. And one interesting fact that you can all take home with you is that they never trademarked the name Oops All Berries for ha! their cereal. Fuckers. So now... Any of you can go make an Oops All Berries. Yeah. All of you. Oh, yeah. We didn't trademark it either. You got to pay it forward. Yeah. We were like, did we get the game on itch? Our work here is done. That's right. That's right. Um, and that, the, the punchline of the game is supposed to be you get to the end, you open the treasure chest after fighting boss battle after boss battle, and you crack it open finally, and <laughs> wouldn't you know it? It's all berries in there. Yeah. yeah. Um, fun fact, we oopsed on that, and you ended up with gold, which not is a, appropriate. Not a single berry in the game actually There made are it. no berries in our game. We, we really oopsed it. We sure did, Pat. Uh, Kate, thank you so much for talking about this game. Um, all right, let's see. Uh, we got a few more games here. Uh, uh, Liz and Ben, I'd love to hear about your game. Invisible Train 5. You know, not like other uh, invisible games. We actually had objects in this one. Uh, very important to just make that distinction. Uh, I, I, also, I fought very hard to have the, uh, the mechanic of the game where it's just a fan blowing wind at you to simulate sticking your head out of a train. Yeah. Um, I'm, I, I stand by it. I, I, I definitely stand by that. I stand less by the fact that we uh, partnered up with TaskRabbit to send people to the player's house and go chicka 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 Games these days are about being immersed in a world of, of just like, you know, almost feeling the game around you. And that's why a nice strange man from the internet making train sounds at you is really the pinnacle of gaming. It's true. Uh, that actually happened to me on my sixth birthday. It changed my life. <laughs> wow, we, we learned a lot about your game. Thank you so much. Um, 
Danielle D, uh, why don't we hear from you about your game, Non Sequitur Battle Gaiden Plus? Boy, so, this is a toughie. <laughs> yeah. Um, we've all heard of, uh, of the Punderdome, right? That blew up in the Brooklyn scene, and we just had to get in there and be like, this space can have more than one word based battle. That's right. And sometimes when you battle with words, you start to battle with fists, too. It's something that happens often. And let me tell you what happens in Brooklyn when you start battling with words and with fists. It becomes all fists. All fists. <laughs> all fists all day long. We called it the power of the fist. By the end of uh, three days, uh, we were hungry. We were tired. We were bloody. But we won. The Punderdome never saw it coming. Nope. And it never will. So y'all never made a video game. You just had a fight club? That's correct. And that was the video game. That makes so much more sense now. I didn't have that context. All right, thanks so much. Um, I'll say this. Never thought I would hear a Punderdome reference on this show. It's very, very obscure. Even if you live in Brooklyn, you don't know what that show is. That's that right. is... Hi, Joe Firestone, the creator of that show. Hello. Um, okay. Uh, let's have Jeff and Abby. Uh, let's hear y'all talk about Dr. Harry Turnbuckle's laboratory of yesteryear. I think, you know, I we could best start this by maybe kind of channeling the doctor a little bit. Oh, who, me? Yes. <laughs> Dr. Harry. What ails you today, my good man? Oh. I, oh, is it your feet again, you little tootsies? Yes, it's my, it's my feet and my shins. They oh, hurt no. so. Dr. Harry, what am I to do? Oh, uh, uh, rub the snake oil on it. Snake oil? Yes. Sounds great. Oh, no. I've got shingles in my face now. Oh, oh, oh. I know how to fix that. Dr. Harry, what do I do? Oh, oh, oh. Uh, exfoliate a little bit better. <laughs> you sound just like my wife. I mean, this is just like getting DLC without paying for it. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much Thank for you. that. Um, it's my favorite mobile game. Uh, okay. Let's have uh, Chris and Danielle. Uh, let's have you talk about how do you solve a problem <laughs> like Mario? Sometimes when you get a real tough one, Chris. Yeah. You gotta think like more. You put on your cap. You, you put on your thinking cap. And you think, what if I were a plumber? Yeah, we wanted to address a lot of the issues with Mario canon that had existed from the beginning and sort of sort it out for the fans so they could understand how a plumber could raise to, you know, rise up to the state. Yeah, how he could use his butt as a weapon of mass destruction. <laughs> That's really the biggest problem, I think, that Mario has. And he must have a hell of a chiropractor, let me tell you. Right, so you play as Mario's butt. You do. And you learn a lot about the person who, who carries you, who, who employs you as a, a device of murder. There's a lot of feelings there, you know. I, what if you were Mario's butt? How would you feel about that on a daily basis? How would you feel about the various mushrooms that you encounter? Going in, stomping. Going in, stomping. It's, it's really quite a, a journey. It's a game with no positives. Uh, there's All right, thank good. you so much. <laughs> uh, let's have um, Liz and uh, Ben. Uh, let's have you chat about... What do I do with all these dolphins? Simulator. I mean, answering the question, what do I do with all these dolphins, that's easy. But when you're confronted with that problem inside of a simulation, that's where the game is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and I think um, everyone can agree dolphins are great. Uh, can you raise your hand if you, if you like dolphins? Get out. <laughs> no, you're right. Everyone who raised their hand, get out. This was all a, a trap to figure out. Oh no, oh, who? Ben, oh, oh, be careful. Be ca <laughs> Everyone be careful. All right, thanks so much. Uh, yeah, that was a sting. One of these games is a trap. We found it. 
Uh, we can move on. Um, uh, Adi, Jeff, and Kate, I want to hear about your game. Rad Chad in Can't Talk to Girls. <laughs> this is the second last one. I felt that I really wanted to get into the character of Rad Chad and get him to talk to girls uh, by the end of it. But I think as we got deeper and deeper into development and explored uh, A, the character, B, the universe, and, and C, the, the tools that we had to work with, he, could, he couldn't talk to girls. That's true. There was, there was a, um, about an eight-month period where Jeff, while embodying method style, the character of Rad Chad, could not speak to me or a D. It made programming the game a really difficult challenge. Yeah. So he insisted on pursuing his his personal vision, but then would refuse to tell us what that vision was. It wasn't that he would refuse necessarily. He would try, but he just couldn't talk to girls. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Um so we've got, uh, we'll do our outro in a moment. We've got one more game. I don't feel like we're going to, uh, Dave, you and I are going to talk about this game, and I feel like it's, it'll be pretty brief. Uh, Windjammers 3. Oh, okay. So it's not often you're proven wrong in a national stage. Um, and when confronted with that reality, sorry. I international just, stage. International stage, excuse me, thank you. Universal, who knows? The multiverses might know for all I fucking know. Um, Windjammers 1 sucked. Windjammers 2, probably going to suck too. Fuck you. <laughs> Don't talk. This is our show. So what do we do with Windjammers 3, Pat? I mean, we just fucking made it. It's just like Windjammers 1 and 2. You're going to buy it anyway. just fucking buying it. I don't know why. Thanks, France, for just yeah. always buying the game. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. Not on Switch also. Yeah. No, we did not. We chose not to put it on Switch. Yeah. We don't give a shit. Yeah. We didn't make this game for the money. We made it for the joke. Yeah. Yeah, it turns out that was a bad idea. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we, it's a terrible idea. Yeah. Dave, thank you so much. Uh, and thank you all for coming. Uh, thank you to my panelists. Uh, I'll say that um, in this very venue, on this very Twitch stream, tomorrow we got League of Heels, West Coast Wishes, which is at 8.30, the same exact time as this show. Build the Bear Workshop is not being streamed, but it'll be on my YouTube channel, so check that out. Uh, I stream, I do a bunch of stuff. I fucking, I don't know, 